Hello, everyone. Here we are again. Welcome to OCN and to my program. I <laughs> believe by the grace of God. Um, uh, I had uh, some special family time, so I didn't have the amount of time I wanted, uh, but it was good. It was good. Our children are growing, and we're blessed. We're blessed. So I'm depending more on God. I haven't got it all planned or written out, but anyway, God is good. So I, I bless you, and I surrender and say, Lord Jesus, I am your vessel. Uh, you live in me, and um, my thoughts, I surrender them all to you, Father, that you'd guide me. It might not be all logical, dear friends, but it's, I'm believing the Holy Spirit will speak to me, and I can minister to you by his word and by his grace and by his love. Uh, that I am the temple of the Holy Spirit, and if you've given your life to Jesus, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to be talking about this uh, new subject. I haven't got all my notes or all of them. But anyway, I'm talking about life, old life and new life. And I want to bring you back to the word life in the Garden of Eden. And this kind, it goes back to Genesis 2, um, 2 verse 7. And God formed man of dust from the earth and breathed of, into his nostrils the breath of life. This is the beginning of life in mankind. And mankind, what year, thousands of years ago, breathed life. And the man became a living being. You know, there was life in the animals and the fish and the animals and in the trees and all of that. But this is um, a living being. And you know, we know that the baby has the life at the moment of conception, the life. Well, this is the beginning of God creating, putting part of his being into mankind. Uh, a living being where he could live because God loved his creation. He wanted a family. He wanted a family because he is a family man. Oh, he could have been happy just with Jesus and the Holy Spirit there, but he wanted a creation because he wanted to delight in something. He has a creative ability, and we are made in his image but here is from the dust of the earth from dust we have come and from to dust we shall return uh, that was the curse on this uh, later wasn't it so anyway man became a living uh, being or a living soul from the dust made in the image of God and the sun different from the animals you know, your animals have a personality, and they can remember, and they might be with you in heaven. I'm not real sure about that, but I know there's horses, so there might be dogs. I don't know. But anyway, it's Jesus is the life giver of the soul, body, soul, and spirit, created in the image of God. And God hears, doesn't he? He never sleeps. We have to sleep. But anyway, he hears, he sees, he feels. Uh, and when Jesus left, he said, uh, he said a, a, a comforter is coming. So he knows what man needs comfort. He needs encouragement. He needs that. He needs that. So anyway, um, let's see. But then I want to go to Proverbs. I want to kind of go through this life. Uh, man was created, but then he, Adam fell. You know that. And so we inherited that sin that Adam had. So when we were born, we had a sinful nature. And the, when the men wrote our Constitution in the United States of America, they knew they were godly men, and they knew that man's nature is sinful. That's the old nature, and it's manifested in the old in the Old Testament, David. But then it became 
uh, their soul was changed, but even in the New Testament, it was changed more. We became a new creature. So I'm going to talk about the old nature and now a new nature. It's all a miracle by God's grace. And it's all been planned beforehand. Because God wasn't surprised when, when Adam fell and Eve. Oh, there was a tree of life there. They could have eaten of it and they might have lived forever, but they sinned, they disobeyed. So we inherited that nature from Adam. No fault of our own, but you can see it in the children. The children are all get jealous and they will, they will say no <laughs> easily. You have to teach them to share. You have to teach them by nature, they are selfish. They want their own way. First of all, when they're hungry, they'll let you know. When they want things, they'll let you know or other things like that. It's our sinful nature. And that's what happened when that those men, godly men, wrote the Constitution and wrote all of the, what was it, the, the, um, the uh, Mayflower Compact. When the pilgrims came, they had to make the Mayflower Compact that everybody would obey the leader. They appointed a godly leader, uh, a former pastor, and uh, they shared, they shared, but then they had to divide the land and, and they had to work because man it is naturally lazy. And he will want other people to take care of him. But God has a better plan. If we don't work, we shouldn't eat. If you can't work, believe for some healing. Believe to do. Be a blessing to others. So anyway, I want to just go back to here. Proverbs. I'm going to go through the Old Testament a little bit and into the New Testament. This is the old nature. But yet... Um, in Proverbs 8, 35, this says, He who finds me finds life, finds life. But that wasn't a, a complete understanding about new life, but they would know this was um, who. Solomon wrote that, Proverbs 8, 35. Uh, let's see, uh, let's see, no, uh, uh, Proverbs three sixteen. A uh, long life is in her hand. Let's see. Let's go look at that one. I, I didn't write that complete. Proverbs 3.16. Hallelujah. God's word is so rich. So rich because we're talking about life, how there's old life and there, and there's new life. And there is a transition there is new life available, and I believe you have new life. That's why you turned into OCN. Well, we always need to learn more, don't we? Okay, Proverbs 3.16. Let's look at that. Hallelujah. He's a good God. 3.16. Long life. And you're talking about blessed. Um, let's look at verse 13. Proverbs 3, uh, 13. How blessed is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For its profit is better than the profit of silver and its gain than fine gold. She is more precious than jewels. Nothing you desire compares with her. Long life is in her right hand. And even in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasing ways. Pleasant ways, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. This is wisdom. Wisdom, oh Lord, give unto me a, a, um, a wisdom, Father of glory, give unto me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of your Son, Jesus Christ. I believe that's what we're all uh, needing for in these troublesome times. So this is even Solomon writing this. He knew because 
Remember when Solomon was crowned king, he he uh, he cried out to God. He said, oh, well, God, in the dream, God appeared to him and said, what would you like? And Solomon said, oh, wisdom, I don't know how to, how to lead these people of yours. I don't know how. So God was pleased when Solomon asked for wisdom. And he said, because you were humbled yourself, I will give you wisdom, wisdom. Oh, that will be known for ages, Solomon's wisdom. So this is written by, by Solomon. Blessed is the man who finds wisdom, wisdom. It's available to us even more so. We need it more so, but it's available. So that's what Solomon said. Okay, long life is in her hands. As I get wisdom, I will know what to eat. Uh, how to exercise, how to call out to God, when to call out to God. And oh, I, I just need it all the time, even more so <laughs> than when I was a child. A child doesn't have any wisdom, do they? Oh, there's a saying that they really don't get. The onset of wisdom is around the age of 25. I don't know, but anyway. Okay, let's see. Let's look to Psalms, Psalm 16, verse 11. This is David. Psalms, Proverbs 16, 11. Hallelujah. Oh, God is so rich. So his word is so rich. Um. Oh, now I just have to read this. 16, verse 8. I have set the Lord continually before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also shall live securely. For thou wilt not abandon, this is verse 10, 16, verse 10, Thou wilt not abandon my soul to Sheol, neither wilt thou allow thy Holy One to undergo de decay. He's actually speaking, seeing uh, Jesus being born. Thou wilt known to make, n make known to me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. In thy right hand there are pleasures forever. Uh, there is life. What did I say? 16 verse 11. Let's see. There are pleasures forevermore. Long life is in her hand. So it's life. It's life. And we're talking about life. Old life and new life. But Solomon did have it have a, a knowledge of that because God gave him wisdom. He humbled himself. And now David too. Oh God, how David needed wisdom because, oh, things were falling apart. David was anointed to be king by Samuel. Uh, but Saul was the king and a bad king at that. But uh, David had to flee for his life because Saul did not like him at all. So this is wisdom. David is saying to God, where, where do I go? Where do I go? God gave him wisdom, but he did not touch God's anointed because Saul was anointed for that moment. At the same time, we pray for our leaders, for what position they are in, not necessarily set there by God because God gave those, those Jews the desires of their heart, and it was not God's plan. But they they wanted to be like all the nations around them. So they did not seek God's wisdom, but God gave them the desires of the heart, which God does to us sometimes. Um, because we're not seeking God's wisdom, we're listening to the desires of our flesh. But he is so good, and he was so good to David. David waited, didn't he? But he had to go <clears throat> some, through some trials some trials, because he didn't have a new nature, not yet the way we have a new nature. Any man is in Christ. When you receive Christ, you're given a new nature, God's nature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Uh, let's see, Romans 5, 17. 
for those who have received, um, uh, the, uh, let's see, abundance of life and abundance of mercy, receive a gift of um, new creature and reign in life. Romans five seventeen. I I want to make sure I say it correctly. This is not in my notes here, but uh, it's important because I'm talking about new nature. Romans five seventeen. Two three four five. Seventeen. For if by the transgression of one. This was Adam, 517, here we are, dear friends, for by the transgression of the one, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive the abundance of grace. Did you? I did. I did. I think back as on my childhood and teenage, ah, I was selfish, self-centered, and God was gracious. Gracious, I had a godly mother praying. Uh, through much more, death remains through the one. Those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through one Jesus Christ. So we reign in life, which means, which means we can have authority over the devil. Oh, we can have authority over the devil. But, you know, um, David didn't know that very well, you know, because he would have these prayers of, um, what do we call them, curses. And God doesn't want us to do that. That's New Testament. But David didn't have the whole understanding of there. He knew about righteousness and judgment. But he would curse them, oh, get them, oh, I won't go over them. But anyway, but he didn't have the understanding like we have. Praise God. We don't curse our leaders. We say, God, visit them. For some reason, you've allowed them to take authority over us, but we need to have a, have a, a wisdom. How much uh, we obey, we, we have to have God's wisdom, we have it, that they do not control everything we do. We submit to them, but we submit to God Almighty. We don't forsake our gathering together. We can go in a house church. We don't need to wear the mask because Jesus is the healer. We are sheltered under the mighty hand of God. We have a new nature. We can hear we have the, the gift of tongues that we can hear. We have a new nature. Oh, we have the gift of righteousness. Gift of righteousness. Mercy. Mercy. He's a God of mercy. Yes, he was a God of mercy in the Old Testament. He made a covenant with that land and with the Jews. At Israel, he made a covenant. He made a covenant with America. He's made a covenant with you, dear friends. Uh, for godly family, for godly relationships. He wants to help you, wants to help you. Okay, Romans 5, 17. Let's see what's it. Uh, okay, Romans 5, uh, no, John 5, 24. Let's go to the book of John. Oh, John, praise God for the apostle John. He knew what he was talking about. He understand about the um, the nature of God, of Jesus. What did we say? John 5, 24. Uh, truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. That wasn't in the Old Testament that you have to believe in Jesus, but they looked forward to. Um, David did know, did know in Psalm 22, he, he wrote the words that Jesus would say on the cross. They did look forward to. And Abraham, he looked forward to a city, a city in heaven. Oh, trusting God. This is Abraham. They 
followed what they knew and God spoke to them. But here, John 5, 24, truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word, you can hear, we are his children, he speaks, and believes him who sent me has eternal life, does not come into judgment, but has passed out of death into life, into life. David knew that, but he didn't have this deep understanding because uh, Jesus had not revealed uh, his true nature. Oh, for he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Where is that? I think I'm um, da 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 da. Mm, I'm the way. Uh, John 14, 6. Thank you, dear. <laughs> yeah, here I got it. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Oh, John eleven twenty five. 25. I'm the resurrection and the life. Uh, and then John 6, 48. I am the bread of life. John 6, 51. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Oh, we have so much available to us. We have new life. He's the resurrection, the way, the truth, and the life. Others might say, oh, well, just just follow your God. There are many ways to heaven. No, there's only one way to heaven, only one way. Oh, a Buddha doesn't speak to his people. Oh, uh, does Muhammad speak to his people in love? No, you can do what uh, do what you believe he says to do, or other denominations or other churches. They they don't preach enough of the living word of God that is available in the word here, and the resurrection and the life. Remember that uh, um, who Lazarus had died. That was a friend of Jesus, and Jesus didn't come immediately. Remember. And then he came, and Martha went out to greet him, and he's, he said, oh, I am the resurrection and the life. And Martha says, well, I know at the latter day we'll be together, but Jesus proved he was the resurrection and the life. Oh, so, and that's the, what we have today. He is the resurrection. He will heal you of the wounds your physical body, in your heart. Some of you right now, I believe, have a broken heart. Broken heart. You don't understand. Oh, what's going on, Lord? I don't understand. I think I received you as my Lord. Maybe he wants you to dedicate again and, say, and get into the word. He said, the bread. He said, I am the bread of life. I'm the living water. Out of, my, out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water, living, new life, resurrection power available to us. Yes, use the doctors if you feel you need to. We all do. We did. We could have died. We had malaria, and we had other things. We we had COVID, but it was oh, very short term because we abide under the shelter of the Most High, Psalm ninety one. We do not fear whatever um, God allows to come our way, because He still loves you, dear friends, and He allows tests. But but if we had keep our heart clean and say, oh, Lord, if there's anything in here, oh, like Solomon, oh, Lord, he humbled himself and God gave him great wisdom. Yes, he made mistakes later. We all do. But there is a Holy Spirit. He's given us as a comforter and he's going to lead us into all truth. And he was going to disclose himself to us. Um well, let me find that just a minute because I was on there the other day and it was like he's going to disclose himself to me. And I thought, oh, thank you. Yes, I just ran into this the other day. John 16, um, when that spirit's 16, verse 13, I'm going to wait a second. Um, the spirit of truth comes. He will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak of his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak and will disclose to you what is to come. He shall glorify me for shall take a mine and shall disclose it to you. 
All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he who takes of mine will disclose it to you. Three times in that one. Two verses. Three verses. Disclose. You're asking God for wisdom. you got a new nature. He does want to talk to you. His sheep hear his voice. So I say, dear friends, you have a spirit of wisdom and knowledge in the revelation of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1, verse 17 through 22. Thank you, Lord. I, I say God is going to disclose himself to you. He's the resurrection and the life, the way, the truth, and the life. He's the bread of life. He is the living water. He is the beginning and the end. He is the baptizer. Uh, he gives you the gift of righteousness. So I thank you, Jesus. I declare that you are healed, that you have wisdom for any situation, wisdom how to bring up your children, how to vote, <laughs> Uh, that his word is true. It'll never fail. It is eternal. So thank you, God. Oh, that these airwaves are not interrupted. I said the blood, the blood of Jesus is alive. It's alive. Jesus put his blood on the altar, and it's still alive. It never died. It never lost its power. So I declare Sins are forgiven by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Tune in again. Give to OCN. God loves you and he's blessed you with new life. Resurrection power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you.